Councillor Ellis to speak. Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, three or four years ago, the leader of the council announced that uh, we would be looking at a programme to uh, regenerate two of our most deprived uh, areas. Uh, and since then, it's been, I think, a long and tortuous and winding road um, to get to the position where we are now. And I'm sure many residents uh, in both those areas will be forgiven for thinking nothing is ever going to happen because it's all taken so long. And I think particularly in the case of the Alton, because we talked about this uh, many years ago, and sadly, uh, it, it had to be shelved because of the recession. However, we are now at the stage where we have uh, appointed a developer for uh, the Alton estate. And um, it's, I think, a very exciting time for everyone in this council that we are going to be improving the lives of many of the residents of that area. We'll begin providing many more new homes that, that are needed to help the mayor fulfill his target. And this is something I think that uh, we can all uh, agree is a very, very good thing indeed. And uh, we are having this debate this evening, and there are a number of speakers. Councillor McKinney. Councillor McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Apologies. Thank you, um, Councillor Ellis. Um, I thought you we were going to be talking for a bit longer than that. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, I would, um, before I talk about the history of Roehampton, um, I would like to say thank you for um, the regeneration and thank you for taking social regeneration so seriously which is what um, we councillors have been going on about for a long time we are going to have a cross-party meeting with officers on social regeneration where even the new partner will join us um, and talk about talk about how we're going to make things happen um, which I'm really looking forward to as part of the Roehampton partnership and thank you to um, Dr Al Sharifi and Miss Anna Bryden for arranging this through public health because it's not an easy thing to do to arrange everybody to be in one meeting. At the moment there is a cross-party agreement but I'm sure this will change as we get into the detail but here we are at the moment about to step into a period of complete change and update which we three councillors are thoroughly behind. Rohanson has a rich history that needs to be taken into account and I would like the developer partner to take into consideration not only this history but also the original architect's intentions for Rohampton, which I'm about to explain. Rohampton began its life as an offshoot of Putney, as Putney was the first point upriver from London. By 1485, Rohampton had 14 houses and one pub. By 1617, it had two pubs and 33 houses. <laughs> the King's Head and the Angel are still doing well today. And Councillor Tracy, Rehampton Church School was built in 1836. Basically, Rehampton was mainly open fields and the great houses were built, and these houses were essentially hum summer houses for the rich families. Most of these great houses are still with us and were built because of their proximity to fresh air, the countryside, and Richmond Park. The houses still with us, for example, are Parkstead House on the grounds of Whitelands Campus, Grove House at Froebel, Mount Clare at the bottom of the estate and Queen Mary's old hospital site, Downshire House and Templeton being a couple of the other examples. By the end of the 18th century, there was hardly anywhere in Roehampton that was not occupied by a villa and its grounds. Between these great villas, however, was Roehampton Park, not to be confused with Richmond Park, which was designed by Capability Brown in 1774. The spread of these villas made Rohanson one of the most aristocratic neighbourhoods anywhere in the country. For example, Parkstead House was at one point owned by the Ponsonby family, Frederick Ponsonby also being the third Earl of, Earl of Bestborough, a family connected with the Spencer family. Fred Ponsonby, a descendant of the Bestboroughs, being one of our Labour Lords today. I actually live on Ponsonby Road, and the 72 bus goes up Bestborough Road. Gerard Manley Hopkins, a Jesuit poem, a poet, sorry, also lived at Parkstead House, at the time called Manresa House, because of the Jesuit owners. I would like to reference here the historians Dorian Gerhold and Jacqueline Luce, which is where I've got my information from. 
However, these villas were occupied for most of the year by servants only, as the landowners preferred to live in Putney, Wimbledon and central London, which I would like to suggest began today's tradition of absentee landlords, as these were absentee landowners. Actually, the land surrounding Rehampton Park became the basis for the, the Alton Estate as we know it now, and it was designed and built by London County Council, and the buildings reflected the European modernist principles of mixed development. The range of housing types were for all ages and all incomes, and these dwellings were built to produce a feeling of neighbourhood and community, which is one of the fundamentals of social well-being. A recommendation during the planning stage was that there should be an imaginative use of the open space and the contours of the previous Rehanson Park and natural features of the site, such as our old trees. I would also like to reference a thesis by Nicholas Murtha Day in 1988 and thank Mr. Gary Cox for unearthing this valuable document. Day talks about the time being one of the immense ideological change which saw the creation of the welfare state. Architecture of the time in the 1950s was thought to be the solution of the social and economic problems, and architects were beginning to concern themselves with a reconstruction of society. I see the red light, I'll just read one more sentence or two if I may. Um, at the same time, Le Corbusier de Unit de Habitation, which are known as Highcliffe Drive today, were built on stilts so that they could keep the vista of the open grass open. And the whole of the Alton Estate was built along the contours of Rehampton Park. Um, these um, units, units are grade two star listed, and Le Corbusier is quoted as saying that architects can give modern society the solution for which it is waiting, happiness. However, Rehampton, uh, Danbury Avenue is what's the part which is being demolished. That was thrown up hastily because of lack of money or lack of time and it needs to come down. Please. So if Thank the, uh, if the um, developer can take into consideration the history when they start planning. Thank you. <laughs> and we will move on to Councillor Celia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak on what's a very important issue for the borough and one in which we as councillors can make a difference. Um, I welcome the report and the news that we can move forward on the Roehampton Regeneration Project. The acceptance of the offer of a bill partner and the progress on, pl on plans for our decant sites are very positive and I feel tremendously proud of our achievements to date on estates regeneration and I'm looking forward to hearing more good news in the future in this chamber. I particularly welcome what the Alton Regeneration will mean for children and families growing up in the Roehampton area. As a member of the Children's Services Committee, and as sometimes possibly as an over-anxious mother, I spend an awful lot of time thinking about the things that children really need to flourish. It's clear to me that good housing and strong, vibrant communities are at the heart of this. Considering children and families at the centre of the regeneration illustrates for me the importance of this work and the reasons for which it is deserving of such high praise. Firstly, there are the obvious benefits of replacing our older housing stock with modern, high-quality housing. We know the positive effects a safe, secure and fit for purpose place to call home will have on our children. There are an additional 256 council and shared ownership homes provided on, this, on the Alton site, which is 30 more than currently. And if you combine it with the Wind Stanley, which I appreciate is not in this report, it's over 3,000 homes that will be built as part of the regeneration. As well as building homes, our tenders required contractors to consider community spaces and landscaping as part of their bids. The improvements to the wider public realms will mean that children and their families will grow up in areas of which they can rightly be proud. The program also includes plans for new community facilities, a wonderful new library, a community and wellness centre and a community pavilion. These facilities will give families a place to spend time together enjoying themselves, meeting their neighbours and new friends. Community spirit and social cohesion are born out of these collective structures and positive environments. They help families and children to build the support networks which are so important to thrive and to feel grounded in their local community. The Cabinet Member for Housing earlier touched on the various health projects that are going on in Roehampton, which again will help strengthen and secure our families' futures. The Regeneration is also delivering retail and commercial spaces, and with that, local opportunities for work. The winning contractor has built in employment and skill opportunities for local people. All of these will help our families and our young people to achieve their work goals and to prosper. The community has been extensively consulted throughout the design and tender process and the early planning of the decant alongside the development of our housing options during the regeneration 
mean that residents' needs have been really carefully considered. The contractors in the department, I'm sure, will work to minimise the disruption faced by local people, the stability of knowing where and when they will decant to and where and when they will come back to Roehampton will be of particular importance to families, especially those with children in education. Now finally, as I'm talking about the children of Roehampton and have mentioned education, I'm going to sort of segue into um, congratulating our local primary in the area, the Autumn Primary, on their recent good Ofsted report. Um, although it's not strictly speaking a regeneration issue, I think that people will agree that the progress made by the head teacher and the praise for staff and governors is good news for children in the area and will be good news for the regeneration. As I said at the start, this report's very welcome. I'm tremendously proud of the work in progress across the borough, which will see our children grow up in a true borough of aspiration, where they will thrive as they grow up. The estate regenerations on the Alton and Wynne Stanley are a significant part of this party's vision for Wandsworth. We're delivering not just houses, but homes, jobs, and communities where our children and families can and will succeed. Thank you. Councillor Hanson. Um, may I say that I'm really proud that I am a Conservative councillor because when I signed up, this is one of the things that I really wanted to see is regeneration. So it's so relevant um, because I actually lived on, a, on Patmore Estate in Battersea, which is still riddled with antisocial behaviour, burglary and crime, drugs and gangs and unemployment and people suffering from low self-esteem. I have six children and I'm a single mum and I'm very proud. I am <clears throat> About 14 years ago, I established an organisation and recently, last year, received an MBE for the work I done, I've done. I have dealt with many people in our borough and those who live in these estates these estates. I have heard these, their stories and seen, seen how their lives have suffered in many different ways. There is no doubt in my mind that regeneration schemes will bring about dramatic changes to the very lives of the people who find it difficult to, to progress in life. Over a period of a few years we will see some positive changes. If we, if we look particularly at the Alton Estate in Roehampton, which, which is run by one of council, unlike Patmore, that is run by the co-op. Um, um, the Alton Estate will receive £150 million to kickstart the, new, the regeneration. The Alton Estate will give pr priority offers to those people who live there previously to move into new homes, unlike some schemes, there will be more council homes than, it, than existed before. There will be a community centre, as my colleague said, and many more facilities, a library, a leisure centre, and most importantly, open spaces. As I stated earlier, this can be a life changing for the progress of people moving in. A family friend of mine was involved in the beginning of the regeneration in Merseyside in Liverpool. This was indicated by Michael Hesseton, Michael Hesseltine's Minister of Environment at the time. My friend returned back some years ago, later, and witnessed many, many positive changes. Projects such as the Alton, I feel, will bring about better lifestyles because the occupants will have greater respect for their homes and surroundings. It will also help to reduce antisocial behaviour and bring down crime and giving people more aspirations. May I end by saying, with every, with, whichever politi wherever, wherever political party in, initiates more regeneration schemes must be positively supported by all of us. The change in the future can only be dramatically good. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Sweet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to start by thanking Councillor McKinney for that really fascinating history of uh, Roehampton. I think we don't often talk about architecture in this chamber, and perhaps we should. Uh, I was thinking as I, I was preparing what I'd say this evening, that one marker of our borough's success in recent years is the huge number of superstar architects that have built homes uh, in, in different parts of, of, of our borough. Um, 
just to give a couple of examples, Norman Foster uh, built the Albion Riverside building. He's going to be building, uh, designing uh, one of the, the major parts of uh, Battersea Power Station as well. And he makes his home, his, his business's home in, in Battersea itself. Uh, Richard Rogers, designer of the Lloyds building. Uh, he, he has uh, designed the Montevetro building in Battersea, one of my favourite buildings. Also Riverlight. Um, Terry Farrell, who designed the MI6 building. Uh, he designed Embassy Gardens in Nine Elms. I could go on and on, but these, these architects are soon to be joined by other world superstars of the architectural world, like uh, Frank Geary, um, Will Allsop, and, and a few others. And I raise this because I think one marker of Wandsworth's fairness is the way in which these iconic developments uh, by world-class architects have been used to underpin our commitment to aspiration and ensuring that no one is left behind in the borough when we, when we promote these developments. Um, when I think of the shared ownership buildings being built in Battersea Power Station, for example, uh, by another world-class architect, I, I feel really proud. And, and when I think about the affordable homes being built in Riverlight, I also think we're doing really well trying to promote affordable housing in the borough. I, I think that, as I've said a couple of times this evening, it, it's our prudent management of the housing revenue account and the commuted sums we receive from developers uh, that allow us to do exactly this and make sure no one's left behind, make sure all the community benefits from development. So as we come to think about Roehampton this evening, one of the architects I mentioned earlier, Richard Rogers, he made a documentary in 1996 uh, about the Alton Estate. And I had a moment to watch it over the weekend. It's really fascinating. He called the Alton Estate the most exciting statement of that utopian ideal of cities and towns amongst green landscapes, cities in the sky. And he finally called it one of the best examples of public housing anywhere in the world. People actually came from all over the world to see the Alton when it was first built. And I think he's right. The Alton estate has, a really, estate has a really special feel to it. That green space, um, the, the, the south-facing, very light homes uh, in, in some of the buildings that we're retaining, uh, the trees. Um, I'm person. I know this is a, a matter of uh, divided opinions, but I'm personally a big fan of those concrete slab blocks which we're actually keeping, the, the listed buildings. And it's, it's called regeneration, not reconstruction. And I think what we're achieving by uh, you know, starting tonight, really, is making sure that we retain those good elements of the Alton Estate and make improvements uh, where things haven't quite worked. And we're certainly improving on a few issues in the, in the original design, for example, by moving the um, community centre from the edge of the estate to the centre, where it will really be at the heart. As, uh, as councillors have already said. But above all, we're building new, high-quality housing. I want the first residents to feel the same excitement that those residents in the 50s and 60s must have felt when they moved into their homes. And I think we, we can be fairly sure they will. Um, they know that this regeneration is bringing new homes, but it's also bringing new opportunities, new jobs, and new community spaces. Our community engagement has been second to none. The residents have been on this journey with us and they will do over the next few years. And I think with the appointment of our development partner tonight, we're going to be taking a big step towards recapturing the Alton uh, estate's reputation as one of the best council estates in the world. Thank you. Just before we move on, um, I've been um, reminded that uh, the word architecture came into your speech a lot. And um, I just want to mention the architectural tour which took place before <laughs> Christmas uh, and to thank the officers for arranging and all for raising money for my charities. Thank you for that. Um, we saw councillors and officers in a totally different light that night. So thank you very much indeed. Councillor Ambash. Mr. Mayor and fellow councillors, I want to start by saying what a pleasure it has been to work with some councillors from the opposition party, from all three ward councillors, uh, particularly Councillor Paul Ellis and Councillor Steffi Stathers on the Roehampton Partnership, 
and Councillor Jane Cooper and Ian Lure in various meetings between our, our two wards. We've got a lot in common, although we have some differences too. Um, it's been three hard years' work to get where we are now in terms of the Alton regeneration. And I'd like also to thank the officers for their effective and diligent work in getting us to where we are now. We do support the Alton Regeneration Program and we mean to see it through to fruition when we take control of the council next year. Yes, we do. But whilst in opposition, we will support the right approach to regeneration, but we'll oppose some of the wrong plans. And when we're in power, we'll driven the right kind of regeneration that will benefit local people in the area. Yes, regeneration is controversial. I know that Councillor Govindia is aware of this, because I was at a meeting with him some two, two and a half years ago. Uh, it was a rumbustious meeting to do with the consultation on the master plan. And many people in that room, Councillor Govindia, said they favoured not taking properties down, but improving the whole of the existing properties on the Alton Estate. And that much of the housing stock could do with improvement. Whether it was done by Corbusier or not, there's mould, there's double glazing, there's lots of things that need to be done. So they opposed the knockdown approach. Now, what we've come up with is a knockdown of a small part of Alton West, but much of the estate uh, will remain as it is. And Council of India reassured the residents in Roehampton that they, there would be wider benefits from the regeneration of a part of the estate but the whole of the Alton estate. And I agree with him. We must ensure that the wider benefits are delivered for the whole of the Alton estate. So we do support a new centre in Roehampton and an improvement of housing throughout the Alton estate. We particularly seek more and new shops, an increase in council housing. Yes, 30 have been mentioned, but it would be nice if we could get up to something like 100 and more affordable housing too. And the community facilities that have been mentioned are very important for local and community groups to have somewhere to house themselves. And a more friendly design of space and communal areas for families. And also better public transport because the links of the bus service to Roehampton are very important and adequate parking for the increased numbers. And of course, we want local people to benefit from training and jobs. So it'd be good if some of the Conservative speakers who haven't necessarily spent much time in Roehampton were prepared to come down and listen to local people and discuss with them this project. I could help arrange it if you wanted to do some visits. But it's good that the Council and the developer understood that community engagement is a key to all this. As Councillor McKinney said, there's been much talk over the last two years about social and community regeneration for those living within the ward. You may remember in my maiden speech, I talked about Roehampton being out on the limb, an area of very high need, an area sometimes forgotten by the Council because it was on the edge. The ward statistics in health, which uh, Councillor Ellis talked about, I've got the more recent statistics that show that men died two years earlier than the average in Wandsworth of all wards and women one and a half years shorter lifespan. So that health problem continues. But from the much warm talk and much words on social regeneration, there's been little concerted action. Sadly, the senior officer in public health was retired as part of the SSA agreement. He understood that social regeneration might mean was working to get a comprehensive an integrated strategy that was resourced and planned to run alongside physical regeneration. It was committed to enhancing the strengths of the community as well as improving health for all. So we do have good community projects, but often they're time limited and sadly they disappear when some funding disappears, as has happened with the Alton Children's Activity Centre. This isn't a sustainable approach to developing a stronger community. I see the clocks against me. So we're having another meeting shortly. We look forward to working with the developers, the new lead appointed from public health, the voluntary sector and those in the community. 
and maybe we need a project like the Fairsdown project which is owned and rooted in the community with accommodation include, and with some staff that might be called the Roehampton project rather than the Fairsdown project so we support the plans we'll keep a very careful eye on making sure they're delivered for everyone living in Roehampton thank you Councillor Caddy Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was at a construction employment fair on Friday, run by the EDO, where more than 150 local residents came to meet employers and education providers. And it just really hit me seeing Thames Tideway, the Northern Line extension, and the power station all at stalls near one another. Just the enormous breadth and depth of opportunity that exists here in Wandsworth. One or two big projects would be a huge boost for any local economy but we have these three and more. This is a construction fair, but we'll have hospitality, customer services, catering, a whole wealth of opportunity coming online. No matter what point in their educational careers cycle, every one of the people attending can be steered to a place where they can take the next steps towards a good local job. And I think because we as councillors are used to seeing and hearing about the exciting projects going on, it's easy to forget just how unusual these opportunities are and just how transformational they could be for the lives and the futures of so many of our borough residents. And this story really ties in neatly with the regeneration programme. Our residents are going to have their living space physically regenerated. But as we've heard from ward councillors and councillor Ellis, there will also be a big focus on social regeneration and a huge part of this will be good local jobs and training. And this is what the EDO, and in particular Workmatch, is doing across the borough, but especially now in Roehampton. We're extending the Quest, the Quest approach, which has been so successful in Battersea, so that we'll have a member of staff permanently based in the new Regener Regeneration Office from March 2017. We've already supported 60 Roehampton residents into work in the last two years, and we hope to greatly exceed that in the coming months. The employment delivery team have also been working with the power station skills and training organisation, BASE, to provide employment support in Roehampton. So from March 2017, there will be two members of the team providing support in Roehampton full time. The benefit of having this embedded work match service in the regeneration office is huge because it means that employment and skills are at the forefront of the project. As the lead on employment in this borough, my aspiration is that every single person living in this borough who wants a job can get one. And with the incredible opportunities afforded by the development and regeneration that's going on here, I think that's an achievable aim. I do think there are a couple of things that we need to keep in mind to make sure that we succeed. We need to make sure that the training and support on offer reflects what businesses and employers need. So this means working with businesses to understand what they're looking for. And it's why, for example, we're setting up coding clubs in local schools, because employers are crying out for workers with those skills. We also need to make sure that we look at the whole pipeline, not just the people who are job ready now, but kids in primary schools, school leavers, care leavers, people with special educational needs, people who have mental health or substance abuse problems, women who want to work part time, or just people who don't have the confidence to go out and compete in the job market. There are parts of our council that deal with all of these aspects. The virtual school, the family information service, Quest and Workmatch, just to name a few. As Councillor Sweet said earlier, we are making sure that no one is left behind. This council had a vision when it set up the regeneration programmes as part of the aspirations agenda. And I think we sometimes get mired in the detail. But we should remember that this programme can offer so much opportunity for our residents. And I, for one, am really glad that the opposition councillors can give cross-party support to our vision and be on board to help support us to drive it forward. Thank you. Councillor Govindia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, very interesting, Councillor Caddy sort of ended her speech talking about the Aspirations Programme, and of course that's where we need to start. It was back in uh, early 2012 that the Aspiration Programme was discussed and in October 2012 we 
in fact, talked about the state regeneration. Just want to remind colleagues who talk about social regeneration as though it was born yesterday or yes, just now in the council chamber. The October 2012 paper talked about seven work streams, about different ways in which we were going to A, engage with people, tackle issues of employment, uh, tackle, tackle issues of crime and drug violence, Tack, uh, gang violence, tackle issues of uh, troubled families, and uh, tackle issues of well-being and poor children, uh, poor school att attainment. So those programs are already hardwired into our thinking long before the, the procurement process for, which is today that we are, uh, the procurement process that we are proving today uh, was even initiated. It's very interesting to um, listen to Councillor McKinney's um, run through the history of Rahampton and she talked about architects and other uh, councillor Sweet's uh, list of architects. And I thought, well, if Kabuzia actually said that, then perhaps there should be lots and lots of happiness in Battersea. Um, there are lots of these architects creating and spreading happiness. Uh, uh, let's hope that that is actually true. But what I would say to councillor McKinney is that, of course, Red Rare will inherit that historical landscape and that tapestry of Rahampton and add to it. In fact, when LCC inherited, it inherited nothing like concrete tower blocks that there are there. It inherited a bucolic landscape and it added to it. It made some, a difference and in fact added to it with, 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 with positive effect. And I think any urban landscape works best when it borrows from the old and informs the new and makes sure that synthesis doesn't jar but, 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 but works together. It doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to have the same materials. It does need to stretch the imagination to use the, the kind of the language, the materials, the, the, the skills and the strength of today and meet it and, 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 and inform the past as well as create a, a, a legacy for the future. And I'm sure Red Ray will learn and, and will want to do that. Um, a very moving point the Councillor Hansen made about you know, her voice. Her voice as somebody who has lived on an estate that is crying out for this kind of intervention. And you know, all I could say to Councillor Hansen is that two major regeneration projects at one time is a record. Uh, a third one would, uh, would not be that easy. But, but you know, Patmore and Savannah need our attention and intervention. And of course, in time, we would want to do that. And just uh, Councillor Salia's point about children and you know, sort of what we want to do for children. I, earlier I, I found a little piece that uh, a young man um, who lived just off Danbury Avenue uh, is just signed up with Cardiff City as a, as a player. Grew, grew up in Rahampton, trained in Rahampton, was spotted by somebody and is now actually a, a star of the local community playing elsewhere. And that is the kind of aspiration we want uh, others to, to, to follow and, and emulate. And Mr. Mayor, I'll just um, go to something Councillor Caddy said about jobs, skills, and opportunity. One of the challenges for us in Rahampton and later on in Winstanley York Road is not only to create the skill and training opportunities on those estates, but also open those opportunities, such opportunities that are elsewhere to the people who live on those estates. Because those, so many of our residents on estates don't have the right uh, skills uh, base, that education, sometimes the right, right attitude. We need to in fact make sure that they are made job ready to take the opportunities of which there are many in, Ra in, in, in Battersea and in fact even in the ones of town centre. I'd sort of say to Councillor Ambash that one of the things that he should be very careful about is to learn and, and not fall into the trap that uh, Southwark did. The previous administration at Southwark started the regeneration project, but it started in a kind of cack-handed way. And then when the new, new, new administration tried to make uh, ch changes to it, there was no more than carping. And of course, that lack of continuity is what is the bane of projects that are uh, longer than one political cycle. Some firm guidelines need to be established at the start of the process and held to all the way through the process. Otherwise, these projects become A, expensive and people lose, lose confidence in it. Mr. Mayor, I'm just about to conclude and I, and I just wanted to reflect on one thing that surprised me. 
that tonight we've had two very important debates affecting the lives of thousands of our residents. And we've heard from many colleagues on both sides. The voice of the leader of opposition is silent. It's not there. And I hope he shares the enthusiasm for regeneration that the resident uh, councillors for Rohampton have. Because without his leadership, assuming that he still has that to give, without his leadership, I think we do, we will be ill-served in the, in, the, in the regeneration story. Thank you. Sorry, who's that? Councillor Hogg. Uh, if, if I could just have a, a brief reply to that. Um, but so I thank the leader for, I think, what was um, a good speech and, and I thought a generally positive debate and would just confirm uh, exactly what the Roehampton Council has said, that you know, we're, we're fully behind this regeneration and uh, I, it's just my view the Council's heard enough uh, housing speeches from me for the minute, but I, I promise I'll be back next time. Thank you. Paragraph 2 is for information on alternate state. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, councillors. That concludes the business for the special meeting tonight. Good night. Thank you.